Hi, my name is Peter Schultz. In this video I will introduce you to WP Data Access version 5. Version 5 contains a number of new features. Navigation has changed. Plugin submenus have been replaced by a dashboard menu and a context sensitive toolbar. Version 5 allows admin users to design their own dashboards and data widgets. Charts are new and introduced as data widgets, but existing publications and projects can also be used as data widgets, opening completely new possibilities. I will show you how you can share data widgets. Widgets can be shared on the dashboard of non-admin and admin users, allowing publications and data forms to load in the back end. Most of you will be familiar with WordPress shortcodes, allowing widgets to load on public pages. Long codes is a new concept, allowing widgets to be embedded on external pages. At the end of this video, I will give you an idea of our future plans for version 5.1 and 5.2. Now let's get started. Welcome to the new plugin page design. The plugin menu does no longer contain any submenus. But don't worry, all plugin pages are still available from the dashboard menu. Let's check. Here is the data explorer, query builder, the data designer, data publisher, data projects and project templates. And the plugin settings page is now directly available from any plugin page as well. Manage your account from the dashboard. The pricing page shows an overview of all features and prices and supports online ordering. Online help is context sensitive. The public forum is now directly reachable from the dashboard and premium support is available to all premium users. Most pages contain a context-sensitive toolbar. Links which were previously available from the page title are now available from the toolbar. Let's switch to an older version to compare. This is an older version and here is the page title. Here is the help, what's new, design new table, imports and data backup links. They are still available in the toolbar. Create a new table design, what's new, import, import CSV is now separated, data backup and here is the context sensitive help. Let's look at an advantage of um, the toolbar. If we wanted to import a CSV file, we needed to click the import and scripts button, the import CSV file tab, and the import CSV file button again. From here, we just click the CSV import and we're on the same page. Please note that the toolbar changes for each page. Most menu items will look familiar to those who have been using earlier versions of the plugin. But the dashboard page is completely new and opens up a lot of new possibilities. So let's have a look at dashboards and widgets. When you open the dashboard for the first time, it will be empty. The toolbar allows us to add more dashboards, create new widgets or add existing widgets. I have not yet created any widgets on this server, so let's create one. There are five widget types. Let's add a chart, which is a new feature. The widget name is mandatory. I'll call this one salaries.
This will open the chart configuration panel. The query builder is integrated into this panel. Click on the query builder button to see a query you previously saved. For this demo, I am interested in the second query. This query joins the employee and department table, as you can see here, and it returns the number of employees and the total salary and the average salary per department. But I'm not interested in the employees, uh, the number of employees per department, so let's remove this one. And now I can copy this query into my chart. There I am. Now let's select a chart type and see the results. This bar chart gives me the total and average salary per department. To select another chart type, click settings, select another type, click OK and you get another chart type. To select multiple chart types, select the types you want to view and you'll see that a drop down list is automatically added to the chart. So the user can now switch between the different chart types. Now sometimes um, when we analyze data we are also interested in the concrete values. So you can also add this as a table. When you switch between different chart types, um, the plugin will use the same data, so it will not perform an additional query or request. Uh, all data is shared between the different chart types. Uh, finally, if you want to change the order in which uh, chart types appear in the drop-down list, you just simply uh, drag the different types in the order where you want to add them and you will see now that the, the, the pie chart comes first and then we get the table, then we get the bar chart and, and, and so on. A dashboard with just one widget is just one widget. So let's add another chart. I'll call this one Sales. I used the Query Builder for my previous chart, but you can also copy a query directly in the query field or just write one from scratch. Now let's add a few chart types and see the results. Well, it tells me that the payments table does not exist in this da database and that is because it is in a remote database. So you can also use remote databases for charts. You might already have noticed the diocese on the top right side. This allows you to divide your dashboard into multiple columns and drag your widgets into other columns, change the order. Now let's add some more widgets. Let's add a publication first. I have a number of publications over here, so I will take the first one, which is authors, and I will add it to the second column at the end. So it will load the publication to the s on the right side, the second column, below the salaries. Now let's move the salaries over here and then add a project. You might be familiar with the student administration system project. So let's add this one. And I call it student administration system. You can see that it is added here below the salaries widget and you can see that our dashboard now starts to contain too much information. So this is 
where a new dashboard becomes more interesting. So let's add a new dashboard. I will call this uh, dashboard uh, student administration. Add the dashboard. Now I will remove this dashboard from here and then you have to be careful because if you delete it, the dashboard will be completely removed. But if you keep it, it will just be removed from the dashboard. So switch to the second dashboard, add a new widget, and this is going to be our student administration system. And here I want this student administration to use the full width. So I can now switch here to uh, teacher administration or student administration, course administration or whatever and then uh, perform administration tasks here into the back end with the data forms. I have demonstrated how to use multiple dashboards and widgets. You can use ta the tabs to switch between dashboards. But we have not yet seen all widget types. So let's add another dashboard. I'll call this one the demo dashboard to demonstrate how to use custom code. To add custom code, you need to select the custom code widget. But be aware that the custom code widget needs the code manager to be installed. I have the code manager installed here. So let's create a custom code widget and what I will do I will use my hello world example and I will call it hello world and this is a very very simple one which just does a hello world nothing more than that. Um, so let's add one which is a bit more complex, which is the daily horoscope. The daily horoscope is a widget that uh, retrieves uh, the horoscope data from a feed and then uses the result to create an HTML page. This doesn't have to do anything with data widgets but it shows the power of custom code widgets. It is really up to your own imagination. We haven't paid any attention yet to the last uh, widget, which is the data info widget. Um, this allows you uh, to monitor a database. And it can be a remote database or a local database. I'll add this one. Uh, this remote database widget uh, to my dashboard. It allows you to check the variables, the status and some additional information. Um, this will probably ex be extended in uh, the future to get more access to your database info.